said I was going to kill you, right? Here you are alive. Get her! We gotta move. Problem solved. Go get her. I'll do it. Oh, holy hell, man. What, what is that? It's a, it's a witness. A witness? Well, get rid of it. I need some answers. Why am I here? I knew your mother. That other guy. He wants to kill you. I'm the only thing between you and him. Forget about the girl. Get out of here. I'm taking her. I'm getting out of here right now. So what's the plan? You ready? You had a chance to get out of here. You didn't go, and that's on you, man. That's on you. I can't wait to get acquainted with you, girl. You don't want to be like me. That's the easy old man. I'll take good care of her. First off, guys, I, I want to say I have an unsolicited review for my podcast co-host. He has no idea I'm actually reading this, but last night he, he received a screening link, okay? And he said, watching The Last Mark now, I don't even know what this movie is, but I kind of love it. So, you know, just wondering, first off, he kind of loves it, and I love it as well. And it reminds me of a lot of the pulp novels that I used to read as a kid and I continue to read as an adult. Can you just talk about your overall creative aesthetic behind this film? Because I think it's really gritty and unadorned, and I think that's what's so great about it. Thank you. Uh, well, one of the main things that, uh, one of the main inspiration was uh, Blue Ruin. I don't know if you're familiar with that film, but it had this very raw element to it, and it was a bit, there was a bit of chaos, and you don't really know what it is as well at the end. Like, you're like, oh, that was very enjoyable, but we're not, you're not really sure what it was, and you, know, you can just categorize it in one or the other. Uh, and also one of the elements I really loved uh, in the story itself that I wanted to highlight in the film is that we were trying to rebuild a family, uh, like a father and daughter relationship that never happened in real life and kind of just happening within this like very limited time that they have with her in captivity. So kind of goes through the stages of bring, like bringing a baby home who's all, all struggling and fighting and screaming and yelling. And then over time, the baby grows up and becomes an adult and so on. So that's when the relationship gets closer towards the end of the film. So kind of rebuilding this relationship that never happened for either one of them. You know, Sean and Alexia, as a cinephile, I loved how claustrophobic this movie was. But I couldn't help but think, was it physically taxing for both of you to be in such an enclosed space? Or is that pretty much smoke and mirrors? And that's just really the beauty of the storytelling behind it. Uh, well, I the mean, majority. Speaking... No, you go first. <laughs> Go okay. Ahead. Speaking for myself, I didn't find it too difficult. I mean, I, I like it when sets are really real and gritty and we did shoot in like a real kind of rustic farmhouse that had a, a basement element to it. And that was really fun. I mean, it might've been difficult to, to shoot for them to get the, the shots they wanted because it was a smaller space, but I thought it was really great because for me as an actor, it puts you like right in that space because it's not like a fancy set. You you feel like you're actually there out roughing it in the cold. So that was really cool. The only thing I'd add to that is uh, it was it was very uh, limited space, which also meant that blocking had to be uh, blocking was challenging because we had so many scenes in the same locations uh, that we had to try to be as inventive as possible to come up with unique ways to move the camera and to move ourselves to, you know, add different dynamics. And that's always challenging when you're in the same space that's small for a long time. But uh, thankfully we had a good uh, captain at the helm and she guided us through it. John, did you love that your character really, there's no, like, there's not a huge backstory and there's not an over explanation about a redemptive arc or he, he's, he's a killer, he's an assassin. And this is his story along with his story with his daughter and, and how they're trying to survive. Did you love, love the fact that it was kind of a no frills approach? And, you know, it's not, it's, not like, it's not kind of like a explanation on what he's done in the past. Yeah, I like the, I like the idea that he doesn't monologue at any point. His subtext doesn't leak. 
uh, to fill in the audience. That's always interesting because the challenge is you still have to find that to fill yourself up as you're playing it. Um, but it's great when you don't have the onus of having to actually divulge all that to the audience. So I agree with you there. Um, for me, I think that the performance was grounded in the sense of someone who was looking for a connection with anybody else in the world. And also, I think his panic attacks is a result of that loss of connection. And so uh, for me, both of those things were kind of the anchors to what I was trying to do with the character. And Alexa, with you, I just love, you know, you get this all the time, but the stuff with Jack Reacher, with you as an actor, you just really know how to get to those emotional places that few do. And especially with this role, it's so layered. And how, how gratifying was it for you to actually take on this role? And what's the key to actually getting to those places that are, it's so pretty much fearful, pretty much to experience? Yeah, I mean, for me, I like to find something that I have in common with the character. And it wasn't too difficult for me for this character because growing up, I didn't have a close relationship with my dad. So for me to experience that that bonding with the character of Keel as Peyton was really exciting. And I was able to kind of go to those vulnerable places where she really wanted a dad, but then she was in this this crazy situation at the same time. And um, yeah, it was really exciting. I think I've never really been afraid of expressing myself in those ways. I find it really satisfying and I find set to be a really safe place. It's really creative and you're there to, to perform and to go to those deep places. So I always feel really safe doing it. And for you, Reem, I think this movie doesn't really work if Sean and Alexia don't work as as a pair and was it a home run for you as far as choosing them as your leads because uh, did you just go over their body of work and see how, how great they were what was the process for you in knowing that this partnership would would, uh, would kick off oh it's a couple of elements there uh, first of all um alexia was fantastic in the audition uh, it was my first time to be familiar with her work and she really knocked it out of the park like she was really she had the range we had a few times we met online a few times and um, experiment with different directions that the director, the character can be and how emotional she can get. And she really, really knocked it out. It was really great. And as for Sean, I've always been a fan. Like I've always wanted to work with him. I've always talked to directors who've worked with him. I want to work with Sean. What can I do to work with Sean? <laughs> and so on. So I've always been a fan of, I've watched almost all of the films and shows that he's been in. Uh, and it was really great because when we actually put them together, it was, there's some kind of similarity in their energy and the look. And it, you can see there's a bit of like a, a fatherly, daughterly kind of uh, feel about them. They can, they can pass for a father and daughter because of their, their, their look. So it was really great. When we did rehearsals, the, the chemistry was there. You can just feel like there's a bit of familiarity and, and that feeling already there from the moment we started doing the rehearsals. So that was just confirmed <laughs> what was already there. Reem, initially you mentioned uh, the movie that inspired this one a little bit. And just wondering, were you a fan of this genre go growing up? Because... This movie, it feels like it was made by someone who grew up in this milieu. Or was it something that you just took on for several months and you researched and you were just able to knock this one out of the park? My, my favorite genre and the genre I want to work in a lot is more magical realism and psychological thrillers. But I'm really into any films that kind of challenge me. And uh, as a director, it's always amazing to work on something you haven't tried before. So this was my first time to do action and this kind of thriller. Uh, so there was so much to learn um, from other people on set, from the producers, from other films that were out there. And one of them, I felt I didn't find the exact right um, correlation with other films, except when I saw Blue Ruin, because I love the raw element. My, my directing style always has this very raw, very simple uh, thing to it. And I found that in, in um, uh, Blue Ruin. So I felt like, oh, this, this kind of inspire, inspires me a lot in the way I want to go about making this film. It was a very good direction. Regarding past bodies, uh, body of work, Sean, just wondering, you know, I have, a, I have a cousin in the Philippines and he loves, he he's very picky and he said his all-time favorite series is, along with The Twilight Zone, is The Expanse. And just wondering for you over the years, what's it like to have that kind of dialogue back on your character and just be part of that entire universe? Because it's, it's, um, it's a series that in perpetuity will continue to come back as far as the great reaction towards your character, as well as the overall big picture of that universe. I'll tell you one thing, man. Sci-fi fans are hardcore. They uh, they they show up for a show, and that's it. They are loyal to the show forever. And yeah, it's a it's really a great feeling as a performer, especially 
in film to get feedback from audiences, right? Because when you're on, on the stage, you get an automatic response and you know whether your work is affecting people or not. But uh, when you work on TV and film, you don't necessarily have the same connection with an audience. That's changing because of social media, obviously. But uh, the various uh, sci-fi shows, um, they have such built-in communities now that uh, it's very edifying as a performer to know that your work is reaching a lot of people. And uh, uh, it, there's also a downside to that as you start to get identified with a certain character and a certain type. And uh, for example, I'm on Star Trek now and uh, so many responses I get, you know, 50, 100 responses a day saying things like, I turned on Star Trek and there's my character from Expanse on Star Trek. And of course they're very different characters, but uh, when you get associated with a, a particular character, you, you have a bit of a hill to climb, I think, to disassociate yourself. But I really appreciate the fandom from all of all of the the Expanse fans because uh, it really helped keep that show alive. You know, Alexia, for you, you mentioned on your, I was checking out your IG feed and you're talking about how this movie is, you're really proud of it. And for you, do these, in general, from your perspective, how rare are these type of roles? Because this is such just a very complex character and there's so much to do. This must have been such a, a great experience for you overall. Well, it's really exciting, especially to find something that's written so well. And I think that's a testament to our writer, Cheryl Mayer, um, for being able to write something that had the action thriller element, but also kind of like these quirky comedic moments, which I really loved with some of the supporting cast, which I thought was great. And just to be able to explore like as an actor, we really were exploring the tone while we were filming. So, you know, having the action and then the thriller, but also having kind of these nice comedic beats that were subtle. And that for me was really exciting as an actor to kind of tease apart and, and play with. So I felt really grateful to be a part of this project for sure. My final question is I, I do a movie podcast where I ask filmmakers and actors to name some of their favorite movies and for you reem and alexia can each of you name one of your all-time favorite movies and what is it about this film that speaks to, speaks to you and sean i'm gonna get to you because i want to talk about that home theater thing that you posted on twitter but uh reem and uh, alexia can you name a couple, uh, one of your favorite movies it's one of the most difficult questions <laughs> i'm like 10 in my head right now floating, but, but... i apologize you can... but i can i can maybe cool. mention alps I don't know if you heard of yeah, Alps. It's uh, Yargos yeah. Latimov's film. It's, it's my favorite film of his, and uh, and it's just one of my favorite because also aside from the concept being very, um, very different and strange, it's just like his incredible directing skills that managed to bring something so bizarre and make it so believable and completely buying into it that this is actually a real thing that's going on. So I just I love that. I love that his approach to these kinds of films and stories. So for me, I would say I love The NeverEnding Story. It's a fantasy-based film. It's from quite a while back. And I just love it. I love like the, I love stories that have like children in them just because like it's this young child at the beginning of the film that I believe he loses his mother and he's grieving and throughout the fantasy of the story, he comes to terms with the loss of his mother. And I just thought that was so brilliant. And it was so beautiful, just all the um, the fantasy elements. And I just, I love fantasy. So <laughs> anything like the labyrinth or the never ending story, those are kind of my favorite go-tos. And, and Sean, you know, uh, look, I, I know I saw that home theater and you picked some of the movies one should watch once they build up their home theater. I'm still, <laughs> I have a horrible TV in the back. It's, I, I need to save up some money for, for my own home theater. But first off, In the Mood for Love was a life-changing experience for me, but I don't want to actually talk about that, your, that choice, which is amazing. I want to ask you, why in the world, it, Steven Spielberg, he's known for so many movies. Why is Empire of the Friggin' Sun not not mentioned when they talk about some of the most, the biggest masterpieces behind Steven Spielberg's body of work from your perspective. Well, I don't know why you're asking me that question, but uh, I would totally agree with you. That film is epic. It, I mean, talk about charting a journey for a character and for an era. Um, you know, I, I, just imagine being a filmmaker and having to capture the side, the scope of that film. When you sit down and read a script like that and you realize you're going to go from here to here, 
I mean, that's an extraordinary achievement. It's a beautiful, beautiful film. And so much of that film too is told without dialogue, which is just always superior. Uh, a couple more that questions. That doesn't answer your question, but I can't oh, answer that. I, I totally <laughs> agree with you. And I, I wish there were more people like us who who really uh, put a spotlight on that film. But yeah, and, and finally, Sean and Alexia, what, what, what was it like working with each other? Because it seemed like you guys really had that connection. Both of you are very talented actors. And what's it like to actually sort of you know, work opposite someone who's just really as skilled as, as you in a way. Um, well, I felt like, sorry, we always go over each other. I felt like uh, we really difficult. got along really well. <laughs> and uh, it was really nice. We did kind of have that like father daughter relationship kind of going on while we were filming. And I felt like I could really trust Sean in terms of, you know, at the end of the scene, I might be like, Hey, like, was my performance okay? I wasn't sure about that one line. Like, what, what did you think of that? And he'd be like, no, 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 like it was good. Or if I, if I needed some advice about how to play a certain scene, I would, especially with the anxiety attacks, because his character has anxiety attacks and my character kind of has a similar thing where she has found a way to do some deep breathing, but she does pass out in an elevator. And I remember I wasn't quite sure how to play that. And so I asked John because he was doing a lot of the panic attacks throughout the scene and throughout the, the film. And um, he gave me some good advice. So I felt like we had a nice camaraderie during filming. It was really, really great. I would I would agree to all of that. And I would say that Alexia is a really lovely person. So it always makes it easier when you get to work with someone that's nice. Um, but uh, beyond that, we were shooting in really challenging circumstances. We were shooting during COVID. This was uh, my first job back after being off for a while. I think we were all nervous about shooting in that environment and the protocols and trying to make sure that we were going to be safe. And so, in fact, in, in many ways, there was a distance that was created between all of us because we're stuck in these masks trying to talk to each other. And, um, uh, and in spite of that, I felt like we were able to, once those masks come off, really connect in front of the camera. And it's always, it's always great when you have a partner who's willing to just go for it, either physically or emotionally. And that doesn't always happen, right? But we all try to, as performers, try to trust, try to uh, protect ourselves and gradually give over. But, you know, our, uh, our time and budget didn't afford for a lot of that. So we had to kind of jump in as quickly as we could. And I really appreciated having a partner who was willing to do that. Thank you guys so much for your time and uh, really absolutely not lying. Absolutely love this movie and, you know, hope all three of you team up again. I, I just love this whole, all this connection. So thank you guys so much. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Take care.